Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is with the Canon EOS R and focusing on birds in flight. There have been a lot of rumors out there that the Canon EOS R is not good for birds in flight and I've found it to be pretty accurate and you can see from this first slide here that I'm going to show you that uh, the EOS R gets sharp images with birds in flight. So here we have a ring bill gull at 1 1,000th of a second F8 ISO 200 and that eye is sharp, the bird is sharp, the wings are a little bit uh, soft but you know that's what you expect with a flying bird unless you're going to be at 1 2,000th of a second or higher. And then here's a Herman's gull and you can see that the eye is sharp on this juvenile Herman's gull. The shutter speed was a little bit higher and notice the ISO is up to 2,000 I had a little bit of a problem when I was shooting with the EOS R with the touch bar because I had configured the touch bar to adjust the ISO and because the touch bar was adjusting the ISO every time I would pull the camera up to my eye to take a picture my thumb would inadvertently um, hit the touch bar and I would be changing my ISO and so this one is at 500. I had a very frustrating time taking pictures of birds in flight in San Diego because the ISO kept changing and I kept overexposing birds. I solved that problem by going in and customizing the multi-function bar or the touch bar. I went into the function shortcut menu and I turned everything off. So now I'm not using the touch bar at all because it just doesn't work for me. It's like my thumb is too big and it keeps hitting the touch bar and I keep changing the settings and I don't want to do that so I just turned it off. So here's a ring build goal at 1 800th of a second, F8, ISO 200. And you can see this is a sharp camera. The images coming out of the camera are sharp. I'm using a 100 to 400 millimeter lens, the version 2, so it's a sharp lens. Because I changed how I was setting up the camera and I was using the touch bar for the ISO, I decided to make a couple of other changes. I went into the menu system and I selected customize the dials. I changed the main dial that's the one you use with your index finger and I changed that to make sure that it would adjust my shutter speed and then I went down in the mode dial or, or it's the quick control dial but it's by the mode button I changed that to make sure that I was on aperture and that I could adjust my aperture that way and then I changed the control ring which is on the adapter and I changed that so that I would change my ISO. So I have complete control over shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, the three pillars of the exposure triangle, and I can adjust those as I need to. Now the control ring works really, really well. I like this feature. I like being able to adjust it really quickly. So here's another ring build goal with a high ISO, but you can see it's a sharp image. It's a, you know, the wings are pretty sharp because they kind of hesitate when they're in the up position. The eye is sharp. I'm getting good images with this camera. Now there's a little bit of a contrail on the left hand side of this picture, but the bird is sharp. Now the second problem that I had was that I kept pulling the camera up to my face and my nose would hit the touch screen and when my nose hit the touch screen my focus point would move to the left side of the frame or the lower left side of the of the frame and I didn't want to do that and I found that very frustrating. So I finally figured out that I could go into touch and drag AF settings. I could enable that and then I can make it so that only the right side of the screen is active where I'm going to move the focus point around with my thumb. This worked really well and once I made this change I was able to get really good birds in flight photos. I got the focus point right where I wanted it. Here's my list of pros for the ESR. I like the EVF. The electronic viewfinder is awesome. I like being able to see the actual exposure. I like the level that's available in the electronic viewfinder. And I like being able to see my histogram in the electronic viewfinder. I find all of those things really helpful. I like the autofocus. Generally, I think the autofocus is really good. I love the fact that I can get autofocus at f11 so I can use a 100 to 400 lens and that's an f4.5 5.6 lens. I can put a 2x extender on there and I can autofocus at f11. For bird photography, for walking around taking pictures of bird, that is just awesome. I like the flip out screen, that's really helpful for low angle shots and for shooting videos. I like the control ring adapter. I think that's genius. I haven't seen that before. I guess some other mirrorless cameras had that, but I hadn't seen it before, so I really like that. 
I like that the camera has a 4K crop when shooting video because as a bird photographer, extra reach is really good. So now I can shoot with the 600 and I don't have to use the 600 and a 1.4. I can just use the 600. I can put it on 4K, shoot some video, and then I can downsize it to 1080 and I've got just that extra reach there. I like the fact that I can use the 2X extender with the 100, 400 millimeter lens because for walking around taking pictures of birds and for bird photographers, this is excellent. It means that we can shoot that lens at f5.6, f8, and f11, get autofocus, and it really increases the reach that we have when we're doing our bird photography. Hey, here's my list of cons because, you know, the camera is not perfect. No camera is perfect. I don't like the touch bar. I really wanted to like the touch bar, but my thumb is too big or it's too sensitive and it just didn't work out for me. I don't like that I'm still getting some blackout or review going on when I do birds in flight or multiple sequences of pictures. I get a little bit of uh, delay there and I don't like that. And then I'm not sure about the low light autofocus. So the days that I've been having low light, I also had fog. And so I'm not sure if the camera has a difficult time focusing in fog or low light. Fog I could understand, just about any camera is going to have difficulty focusing in fog. But the low light situations I've been in have both been foggy, so I think this camera has issues with low light autofocus. Some people say that it doesn't, so uh, take this con with a grain of salt and uh, see how you like it yourself. I'm just going to go through some pictures that I've taken in the last uh, month and a half with this camera. So this is a male mallard. It was taken at uh, 180th of a second at f11 with a 100-400 millimeter lens and the 2x extender. And it is sharp. And I propped it in so you can see that it's a pretty sharp image with a 2x extender at f11 and 180th of a second. That's really amazing. And then here's a Willet. I took this down in San Diego a week or so ago, F10 ISO 400. And again, with the 2X extender, I can really reach in there. The head is a little bit soft on this one, but I think that that's okay. I cropped in quite a bit. You can see that the water foam at the bottom is, is pretty sharp. So it might've just been me and it might not be the extender. And then here's a ring build goal with the 2X extender and it's a nice sharp image and I think I showed this one in an earlier video. And then here's a Mew goal, very sharp eye. This is the 1.4 extender, works really well with the 100 to 400 millimeter lens. And here's a long build curlew, pretty bright sunny afternoon in San Diego. But EOS R, the 100 to 400 lens and the 1.4 extender gave me a great image. And then this was taken on a foggy day a couple of weeks ago and 100 to 400 millimeter lens, 1.4 extender, uh, bald eagle on a stick, just kind of uh, hanging out looking for some food. But you can see that it's a nice sharp image. Even though it's in the fog, the eye is pretty sharp and I'm pretty happy with that picture. And then here's a peregrine falcon with a 600 millimeter F4 lens in the 1.4 extender. And you can see that this is a nice sharp image as well. And then finally, just a bald eagle at 1 100th of a second, F9, ISO 800. And this is straight with the F4 600 millimeter lens, just a bald eagle hanging out on the beach. It shows you what you can do with this lens and camera combination. So I'm really happy with the EOS R in that situation. Hey, if you want to learn more about bird photography, you can pick up a copy of my book on Amazon. It's available as a Kindle or a trade paperback. You can also get a signed copy of my book by going to timboyerphotography.com. To learn even more about bird photography, consider joining me on one of the seven workshops I do in the Western United States. Check the workshops out at timboyerphotography.com slash workshop. And if you haven't subscribed already, hey, give that uh, subscribe button a click and hit that icon, the little bell icon next to it so you'll get a reminder whenever I publish a new tutorial. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this week. I really appreciate you guys out there. Thank you so much. Have a great week. I'll see you next week. Bye.